the end of June, a bittersweet time for thousands of high school grads. Graduation is a momentous event in their young lives, the first tentative step into an adult world. And these days, many of them wonder what that world holds in store for them. As you saw on the National, Anne Medina is in Beirut tonight. But recently, she visited the class of 85 at Walter Murray Collegiate in Saskatoon. And she prepared this documentary on the best days. Tonight, the horns must be on key. The trumpets, flutes, clarinets, their music is about to mark a transition into the world of growing up. Academic award. Graduation is I happening. Is this here? No pack. No check. Okay. Jeff! Oh, geez, that's something else, eh? Uh, the students are still getting used to their new image. Without their jeans, they're a bit awkward as they run the gauntlet of giggles, stares, and surprised recognition. They're nervous. Could you tell us Florida one more time? And a bit confused. Bev. Tracy. I got the tux. They like the look of being grown up, but they still can't give up their gum or their impatience. Do we have to sit through all the awards? Yes. Oh, no. Finally, in their rent a tux and best dresses, the 1985 graduates of Walter Murray Collegiate begin to file in. They know that this is the first step away from the safe, comfortable, fun world of living for themselves, the world that is high school. Attention, please. Mr. Bacali, contact the office for a message. Mr. Bacali. Graduation is still important for high school students, and while some of us may remember that sense of excitement over the future or feeling about something new that's going to happen, students here really don't want to think too much about what comes next. For them, high school is too nice and easy, too many good friends and parties, in addition to the algebra classes and absent slips. These are the best days. And for a little while longer, anyway, students want to convince themselves that they aren't also the last days of just having a good time. <laughs> One of that big stag tonight, Steve. <laughs> and they do have a good time. Yeah, we're going to that one. You're going yeah. here. It's was... not a stag, is it? Where? Stag and stag and stag Where? It's nice. Yeah. Yeah. In between classes. Don't you go to ride it through? And after classes. They try to cram in as much partying into these last few weeks as they possibly can. The weather's getting nicer and summer. Everybody skips class and goes out to the forestry farm, drinks beer, plays frisbee. And if my teachers see that, <laughs> so that's where you're being all these afternoons. For some, it's time for a little hooky. But for others, it's time to join the first football practice, even though they won't be around next fall. <laughs> Sports and friends. That's what they say they'll miss most. Next year, they won't be around the winning team. Next year, they could lose touch with their very best friend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared, really. Because, you know, high school, you've been with all these friends for four years, and all of a sudden you're gone. Like, it's scary. When I was little and you look at people in grade 12 and you graduate and stuff, you think, oh, they're so grown up. But now that I'm here, I don't feel like I'm ready to go out and be an adult and in the work world and stuff. <laughs> Kids like Connie Wells just don't want to settle down and be responsible. Someday, a job or university, but not now. Dean Zoller also isn't ready. As many of the staff know, he's had a habit here of going his own way. Well, I figured maybe you two little monkeys are up to something. <laughs> they don't trust his excuses for lateness, for example. But this year, Dean has pulled up his marks for the time he does want to go back to school. And for now, he's got a girlfriend and a ticket to Hawaii without her. Chasing Hawaiian broads? No. Hawaiian chicken foods? I was a little bit of a detective out there. 
Jean got the money to not chase Hawaiian chickie-poos by working part-time. Like many of his classmates, he makes about $4,000 a year, and he spends it on himself, on his car, and on travel. I don't want to really get tied down too much the next few years. I want to... I don't know, I just want to take things easy, I guess, but, I, you know... I think it's going to mean a lot to me if I get to travel around and stuff like that. I, like I don't mean to be a bum or anything. Like I don't want to slide from now into uh, my future for the next 40 years. Eh? So. No grocery bills, no rent, no 40-year ruts. It is hard to give it all up. Jeff Smith is a school leader, an athlete, bright, one of the in crowd, the all-around Canadian kid. He runs in a different group than Dean or Connie, but with respect to next year and what he wants, he's not really that different. I think I'd like to just take it easy for a couple of years and then go back and get an education and start to make lots of money. Money? Because I'm, I'm used to a pretty, pretty good lifestyle with skiing and stuff like that and always having a car to drive. And, and so I guess if I didn't make money, then I and I'd have to change pretty quick. And I don't think I could do that. See, there's 13,500 to 37,500. Working money are on their minds. That's gross, that's not net. There's no way. <laughs> Guidance counseling for Michael Sanderson, for example, means, yes, finding a suitable job, but also a suitable salary. I want a job that's, that, I, that I like doing and that I'll be comfortable with doing it with the people I work with. Is that more important than money? Uh, just a little bit. <laughs> I like the money would make me comfortable too, so. Before they get that comfortable job, however, they're practical enough to know that other kinds of training may be necessary. To make a dollar for the car, or for those who do want to try it on their own, the means. Why do you want to move out? Just to be on your own? Independence, finally. <laughs> I've lived with my parents 18 years. It's time to get rid of them. <laughs> and that's what this is all about. Yeah. Getting out of school and saying goodbye to my dad. Goodbye, mom and dad. Goodbye, classes. It does sound nice, even if classes begin and end these days with rock songs instead of bells. It sounds tempting. on the raft. The raft has but just many students will miss, for example, Mr. Christensen's readers. English class. Kind of Even Connie will, who didn't do that well. You fly around and get him something to eat as quick as you can, poor thing. Oh, here he is himself. Some may get a little bored, or some may think of other things, or worse, not think at all, but Huckleberry Finn is at least over the sign of better than trigonometry. 75 degrees. Besides, Trig is the last class of the day for some grade 12s. And in the days before graduation, students have a habit of okay. counting down the All last minutes and thinking 15. about the night of partying up, coming up. 27 degrees, divide by the sign of... We're the best party! The school does not approve. The parents don't approve. The law doesn't approve but the parties still get held, and even student leaders end up going to at least one. Stags and stagettes, they're called, with all the music, beer, and bluster that the kids can take or give out. This is the celebration. This is Walter Murray. This is Walter Murray, the capital of the world. In high schools. Lots of love. The capital of the world. Hey, cheese because the school really is the center of their world. With all its memories and friends. Friends. That was the theme of this year's graduation song that echoed through the halls on the day of graduation. This was only one of many last-minute rehearsals and meetings on the big day. Have you received the bill yet from the buses? They know that they're coming, though, don't they? Plans had to be perfect. Buses had to be lined up.
tickets to yet another party sold to those who are waiting. But lots of people think $14 is too much for aftercare. And since the school approved of this party, parent chaperones had to be scheduled. First of all, I would like and then to thank there's you Jeff for giving Smith. me the honor of being the valedictorian of 19. He had to polish up his Our big speech. Our tonight is the culmination of four years of high school. Four years of hard work, new friends. He had hoped to have it memorized, us, and he the almost did schooling. it. When we were freshies, it seemed as though the four years ahead that it would take to reach this night would take forever. But those four years have gone quickly, perhaps too quickly. There's not been enough time to get to know enough people or to do all the things we wanted to do in our high school years. But those people and those things that we did do will remain with us forever. Finally, despite all the doubts Very they had longer. had that they really would get through those years, Ding Zoller, despite lateness slips and warnings, Mr. Lettingham, the principal, handed out the certificates. Connie Wells. All that was left then was the big night. Mitchell Wensley. Next to one's wedding, there's probably no dress-up time that's more exciting and full of glamour than graduation prom. The makeup has to be just right, and this year, a few trendy hats have to be figured out. But then look at what that does right there. That looks retarded. Well, that's what I was saying. Don't start it quite so low down. Naturally, they have to be this fussed over and fumed over. Mm-hmm. Okay. Look straight at me again so I can see. Also, you... naturally, Connie's mother knew just what to say to yeah, smooth over okay. a few last minute a teenage butterflies. Probably the best looking girl at the ball, eh? I doubt it. <laughs> Very much so. You know why you're here today? Yeah. For mom. Yeah. And make sure Parents do get a small payback for all their frustration and worry. They get to see a new image of their grown up child. A glimpse into what might emerge. Very good. That's right. One for Dad. <laughs> Get ahead. Nice smile. Dad may be proud, but prom night belongs to the grads. The first part of grad night is conservative, it's straight, proper, and out of the past. And it's a night of magic. However, one that takes a little more than Dean's rent a tux to work. Yeah, more, Dean. That's good. Well, we should have went to the dance <laughs> And there were other problems. Connie's hat. But soon the hat comes off and a very different part two begins. The buses did arrive at the right place and the right time, and now the student organized fun starts. For warm ups, there's bowling. At least that's what this group of newly anointed adults call them. Then on to a second dance, this one with a little more spunk. This is the last dance, the end, when the students revert to the predictable, or to the comfortable, or to being simply adolescents, whatever their parents may have wished a few short hours earlier. Tonight, the kids think they can hold on to these best days for a few more hours, even years. And who can really blame them? Walter Murray Collegiate was secure, friendly, it was fun. I had the best time there. I'm really gonna miss it. I miss being around 1,400 people every day. I really enjoyed school, and I wouldn't trade for anything. Once you're out of high school, I think you're an adult. It's scary. Those of us who've been through it and left these hallways and classrooms, we know they're right. For the journal, this is Anne Medina in Saskatoon. Finally, a look at one of the stories we'll be seeing in the days to come on the journal.